We don't go out looking for people. God brings very specific people to our house. Come on up to the table, please. Where'd everybody go? This past summer, somebody from the town just made a comment of like, you know, you're, you're like the only shelter left in town. And it made me laugh because I was like, a shelter? You know, we're not a shelter. We're just a family. We're just a home. Jules, Denise, you guys can come make some plates. And we started talking about when did it change? When did it become a thing? Because now there has never been a point where there hasn't been extra people living here. Yeah, when there's 20 people in the house, when it's standing room only in your kitchen, you learn there's a lot of things that people would label as needs. Um, that just aren't. We don't charge people anything for living here. I didn't have a bad childhood, I didn't have a bad upbringing or anything, but coming from the streets to a family and God everywhere, you know, seeing it is, it's almost unreal. Thank you for the food, Jim and Lydia, the kids. Jules. Jules. <laughs> Over a hundred people have come and lived here for various amounts of time. In the first eight or nine years of us doing that, we really didn't see heroin addiction as the root of anything. And it's probably been in the last five or six that that's been the major component for why people are here. We'll think about it with each other. When you guys are aggravating each other. Is it easy to be nice? I about? find it funny when people ask me, aren't you afraid? Aren't you afraid for your kids? It's not like, um, like a drug house or anything like that. It's, <laughs> it's certainly not that. <laughs> they said my C-section dealt one. Is that so one? at 1 a.m. I cannot have anything else to eat. Is that one? When I found out I was pregnant, I was scared to death because I was used to using drugs at that time. I am packing for myself and the baby for the delivery tomorrow. My, my biggest thing on my mind right now is just her being healthy enough to come home. I'm like, I'm like really, really, really worried about the withdrawal part with her. When you become pregnant, you can't just stop because the baby is addicted to heroin as well. And so, what is recommended is that they start doing methadone. You can start packing what you know you want to bring. Okay. I'm going to keep doing the methadone for my treatment, but it is a big disappointment for myself knowing that she's going to be born addicted to it. Love you. Thank you, guys. I'll see you all later. All right. Okay. And we're off. You ready? Yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there goes nothing. <laughs> we had a tent set up in the woods, and then the tent caved in after a really bad rainstorm. I have nowhere to go, and Lydia said that she would come pick us up right now. She said that we could stay, and then, and then she had to call Jim, because Jim didn't know yet. <laughs> it's a very common phone call. Hey, yeah. by the way, when you walk in, there's strangers in the house. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> It'd be nice to meet him. <laughs> Any recent substance abuse? No. And when was the last time? It was September. September? Yeah. And that was to what? Heroin. So don't be nervous, and you're already nervous, because yeah. so, you know you're the dad, uh -huh. and um, so if you feel the slightest bit of You have a little girl! Mm -hmm. Oh, she's so pretty. Did you guys decide on your name? Braley. You know what Braley translates to? A ray of hope. Yeah, that's what it means.
Yeah, 19 inches. Wow. You happy? With methadone, you know you're not getting anything laced. It's being given by a pharmaceutical company. But the problem is, I have never met anybody on methadone who is like, yeah, let me get off of it. Because it's, it's painful, you're very, very sick. We've been saying now for a little bit that once the baby's born and once Jen is healed a little bit, we want to have her and you know anyone else in the house that's on it come off of it. And I mean, to me, I, I look at this little baby and I go, it's only fair. She has to do it. She doesn't have a choice. She's having to withdraw and, and it's painful for her. And so why should anybody else be able to just make their decisions about, oh, uh, you know, well, I don't really feel like coming off of it. So we do watch these babies in a hospital setting to make sure the methadone has worn off for the baby. The first line treatment for neonatal abstinence syndrome is really the family, the parents holding the baby, cuddling the baby. The nationwide average is still probably two to four weeks. Sometimes it's sooner. We are getting ready to leave the hospital after being here for three weeks to go home to Jim and Lydia's. I feel awful knowing that she's going through that because of me, because of what I chose to do. But she's doing really, really good. Everything's, it's, it's a lot better than anything I expected. Yeah, there's a whole lot of heartache involved in this. There's a whole lot of, it, it's very hard at times, for sure. Um, in fact, every time somebody comes in, I have to brace myself. Am I ready for this person to hate me in about a month? Because they're going to get really angry at the boundaries that I have to lay out. The key thing that I've learned through the years is to realize I'm only part of a person's journey. And if we do our part well, then it will change that person how they need to be changed. It will impact their person how they need to be impacted. All right. I really appreciate it so much. I couldn't done it without you guys. You are amazing. Thank you, Lynn. Come back and visit. Definitely. Okay. Knowing that I've been on methadone for as long as I have, my goal is to start coming down as soon as I possibly can. <laughs> okay. How does that do this? Oh, there we go. You know what that right now? I want to do it right, so there's no chance of relapsing. And I can just wake up with my daughter and do normal daily life without relying on something. <laughs>